and uh, that is about the different uh, uh, care during the pregnancy uh, period and uh, postnatal period also is one of the crucial period and again the health of the mother influences the health of the child again during the uh, postnatal period which is also known as sutika uh, kala which starts uh, which uh, varies from one and a half months to six months uh, or till the uh, menstruation sets in as per ayurveda it is up to six months after the delivery so this is ca considered as sutika kala and utmost care has to be taken uh, during this because the of the process of the delivery the lady uh, quite weak and vata vriddhi is there so whatever the diet and lifestyle practice during this period should be vata shamaka in nature and this vata shamaka uh, diet would be helpful for the prevention of the complications as well as bringing about the uh, physiological things back to the normalcy from the pregnancy to the previous stage and uh, especially during the uh, first uh, uh, week itself like one thing is involution process of the uterus that is the uterus was big during the pregnancy in the last trimester and as soon as the delivery happens the size of the uterus reduces but again gradually it comes back to the normal position that is pre pregnancy period so this process should be aided by means of different diet and the lifestyle so most of the times the vata vriddhi during again uh, during the parturition the vata vriddhi happens apana vayu uh, is uh, aggravated during this period so to reduce this vata again abhyanga is one of the ideal thing abhyanga with bala taila for both the mother as well as the child abhyanga or massage with the bala taila followed by the svedana again uh, svedana or the uh, sudation therapy again uh, the svedana can be implemented in the form of uh, simple like uh, everywhere the nadi sveda or the svedana yantra may not be available so in such cases even the usage of the uh, coal in the uh, this uh, particular vessel so that one takes the steam uh, such kind of a thing also can be practiced and in uh, the ancient times even uh, uh, the this practice was present wherein the uh, lady after delivery would be given a very good massage followed by the sudation therapy locally and oral administration of the medicated ghee and decoctions for 3 to 7 days after the delivery again uh, it is uh, uh, panchakola kashaya wherein pippali pippali mula chavya chitraka nagara this uh, entire combination uh, given in the form of either kashaya or mixed with the ghee or oil or fat can be administered to the lady again all these things are snigdha that will be helpful in alleviating of the vata at the same time nourishing the lady and uh, reduces the pain also and chitraka that helps uh, that contracts the uterus and helps in reducing uh, further bleeding of the individual because uh, it brings about the contraction of the uterus and as the uterus contracts the bleeding is going to stop fast even though it is ushna virya dravya here after the delivery this is quite beneficial and uh, apart from that pepper ginger cumin seed should be specially used for prevention of, of the uh, cold and kapha disorders because during the uh, parturition the lady has a weak constitution she can get afflicted with different kinds of the infection she should not be exposed to the external surroundings or infectious agents much so she should not go out much like it doesn't mean that she should be staying in a uh, place wherein the, where there is no ventilation is there but it should be so that she should not be exposed to any other infectious agents outside because the lady once gets infected means even the baby is going to get affected so both the people are going to suffer so to avoid these things lady has to stay in a room which wherein no much of the external contacts are there 
and along with that pepper, ginger, such kinds of the Ushnaviriya dravyas have a preventive action. They prevent the different kinds of the infections. At the same time, they enhance the digestion as well as the absorption of all the nutrients that are present in the food what the lady is consuming. And uh, after that, abdominal massage and taking bath, etc., the abdomen should be wrapped in a big cloth uh, to compress the abdomen and to avoid the hollow space that is being filled with the vayu. So again, uh, uh, this is one of the very good ancient practices that has been advocated in Ayurveda and mentioned in our classics also. So this need to be practiced regularly because the uh, previously like again modern uh, uh, gynecologists they used to tell don't uh, ever wear any the bandages and all in uh, some 15-20 years back and again now they are switching on and they are advocating that one has to wear that belts and all and again uh, as for the classical things is concerned they always advocate for a cotton cloth to be bound to the abdomen tightly but again cotton cloth is the non-irritating one and which is very conducive for the skin health also and instead of those uh, uh, the belts that are made up of some synthetic material this cotton things are more beneficial and even it is affordable for a, a poor community also without much expenditure most of the times they have the old saris that is kept and that can be used very well for the binding of the abdomen. So that is very good for the, uh, the uh, individual. And water bath in ma morning and evening should be followed by the intake of rice gruel with the ghee and pepper. Again, brahmana ahara should be given. Brahmana again uh, in the form of uh, different kinds of the uh, like uh, various practices are there wherein different kinds of the laddus uh, have been mentioned. Uh, in our uh, traditional food also, they are also very good. Again, they have to be consumed uh, matravat, always we have to keep it in mind matravat or more quantity should not be consumed, they should be consumed in the proper amounts, not more than one laddu per day because again as I tell, to, uh, the lifestyle has changed and in the previous times if they were consuming more thing, they were doing it with the different kinds of the work, but in the present day, excess is not indicated, it should be in a proper quantity. Again, one has to avoid the anger as well as exercise and uh, again, previously as I mentioned, uh, crest seed, this is one among the traditional preparations wherein payasa made of garden crest seed, in Ayurveda it has been told by the name Chandrashura botanical name is Lepidium sativum, which is again one among the Chatur Bijas, which are very nourishing in nature. And as per the modern also, it is one of the richest sources of iron, wherein 100 mg of iron uh, is uh, present in 100 grams of this garden crest seed. So this can be slightly roasted, made into powder and cooked in the water first, then add a bit of, uh, add uh, three-fourth quantity of milk and add a bit of uh, adjuvants like uh, the ala or cardamom and a bit of pepper powder to uh, enhance the taste and add a, a jaggery or guda because jaggery is rich in magnesium also and having more quantity of iron also. So this can be a very good combination for the pregnant lady that has to be consumed every day because milk is a rich source of calcium and uh, the rich source of iron, all these things together with the pepper bit of it, which enhances the absorption rate. So all these things becomes a very wholesome combination for the pregnant, uh, parturated lady. Further, niger seeds, like many a time, some people doesn't like always to consume sweeter things. So niger seeds can be used in the form of the uh, chutney powder, puddies or the powders that can be had either with the rotis or with the rice. And again, a bit of uh, uh, turmeric and a bit of uh, uh, garlic can be added for the flavoring. And as well as at the same time, some amount of fat gets accumulated during the uh, pregnancy. So the usage of garlic helps in reducing the fat that is accumulated during the period of pregnancy. At the same time, any block 
package in the channels is also released by the usage of the garlic at the same time it brings about the taste. And uh, uh, as I mentioned previously the laddus can be made, the laddus made up of uh, the uh, dry coconut and dry dates, cuscus seeds, cashew nuts and jaggery along with the, uh, this uh, uh, gond which is called as or the edible gum from the acacia arabica tree. This uh, forms a very good nutrient uh, and uh, as well as tasty option should be again consumed to, to the moderate extent. So that is uh, one of the things and jivaniya, brahmaniya, madhura, vata, haradravya, kashayas should be used for oil massage and bathing and uh, fumigation with the kushta, gugulu, agaru mix with the ghee can be done. Again as I told uh, during this period the chances of infection are more so the fumigation of the room should be done. So the, that is uh, the thing and decoction of the lodra, arjuna, kadamba, devadaru, bijaka, karkandu again should be uh, given for the purification of the blood as well as the vagina because the hygiene of the genitals is very important again it is prone for infections so always it should be kept clean by means of the uh, like if all these drugs are not available then also the basic thing uh, the nimba or the neem tree is available everywhere especially in the India so those leaves can be taken out and made in the form of decoction and used for washing and again many uh, uh, more uh, disinfectants like Dettol etc are available, not ideally advocated these things are better options and cheaper mode uh, but a bit of uh, preparation time is needed and uh, uh, again always what is advocated depends on the uh, financial status of an individual if financially sound there are many Ayurvedic disinfectants also are available they can be very well used and Kulatha Yusha can be used and again uh, this kulatha or the horse gram is uh, very good uh, for the reducing excess of fat that is accumulated during the pregnancy because most of the times additional fat gets accumulated that has to be taken out. And uh, again uh, certain other practices, yogic practices are also required during the uh, parturation period also especially the uh, wall of the perineum they become weak due to the process of delivery so they have to be made strong. So the uh, exercises to strengthen the peri perineum are highly essential and one among them is Ashwini Mudra that has to be started practicing even very early like other asanas have can be started a bit later but this Ashwini Mudra can be practiced from the uh, uh, fourth fifth day itself that is not uh, and it is not going to cause much of the strain it just involves the contraction and relaxation of the perineal muscles the way of practice is the when uh, the action as one withholds the urine that mus uh, muscle should be activated and this can be practiced even while uh, in the lying down position also so this can be done uh, about 25 times at a time for 2 to 3 times a day to strengthen the perineum that will be uh, preventing the prolapse of the uterus. Many ladies come with the complaint of prolapse of the uterus in the future time. So that will be prevented uh, for the uh, further. And again the uh, all the exercises to reduce the weight because the uh, weight uh, in increase is one of the commonest problem after the uh, delivery. So to reduce the weight, the exercises like Pada Angushtasana, Pada Hastasana, Paschimottanasana, Sarvangasana, Halasana, Shalabhasana, Bujangasana, Makarasana, Parvatasana, Naukasana, Surya Namaskara, Shavasana, all these things can be practiced followed by the pranayama. Here Surya Bhedana pranayama can be done because it is having a heating effect. At the same time it will be helpful in reducing the kapha as well as medha or the excessive fat and anuloma viloma pranayama. Even the kapalabhati can be practiced. Again dhyana is one among the uh, practices that can be practiced uh, even after the 
delivery again for enhancing the mental health of an individual. So, uh, different asanas have been shown whatever already uh, advocated previously, different kinds of the bends when done in a coordinated way will be having more effect, one always combine a forward bend with a backward bend that is Pada Hastasana with Ardha Chakrasana and one side bend with the one uh, opposite side bend like that always they will be enhancing the effect further and all the uh, asanas that will be most of the times the abdominal fat is one of the major problem. So, the asanas which compress the abdomen will be quite beneficial whether it is uh, uh, Mandukasana or Paschimottanasana. At the same time back strengthening exercises like uh, the Gomukhasana are quite beneficial and uh, Bhujangasana as well as uh, Shalabhasana will be helping in reducing the backache and uh, Dhanurasana will be helping in reducing the uh, abdominal fat and uh, Pavana Muktasana, Padottasana, Viparita Karani Mudra Naukasana, all these things are quite beneficial along with the Shavasana or the relaxation techniques. And the uh, Shatkarma, because it has been mentioned, Medha Shleshmadiko Purvo Shatkarmani Samacharit. So, to avoid the Kapha problems as well as reduce the uh, Medhas, then Shatkarmas like Jalaneti, Kapalabhati and Vamanadavati, if necessary, can be practiced. Pranayamas in the form of Nadi Shodhana, Brahmari, Sheetali, Sitkari can be practiced. Again, Bhastrika, again if there is excessive fat in the abdomen, then Bhastrika can also be practiced, followed by the Dhyana. So, totally the all practices together along with a proper sleep or relaxation with a uh, foot massage and body massage will be entirely benefiting throughout the pregnancy. So, always to stay healthy and for the good conception, easy delivery and proper maintenance of the health after the delivery both of mother as well as the child, diet and lifestyle form the key. One has to follow the advices as mentioned. Again, many modifications can be done that are suiting for the present day scenario by using the principles that are mentioned in Ayurveda. Thank you for the patient hearing as well as the principles can be very well adopted. Stay healthy and keep everyone healthy. Thank you so much.